you stay up here and say one.
it's probably too late now.
until some preachers get back to old fashioned leather lung, amen, amen leather rip, amen. slinging, amen, whatever they sling, Bible preaching, amen. Brother Brian, you're going to have to have it. Somebody's going to have to get up and tell the truth. There's enough lies going on in America. We sure don't need them in the pulpit. We don't need them in the church house, amen. Somebody's going to have to get up and preach. Thus saith the Lord. I've heard your preacher preach, so I know you got a good one. You better thank God. Go! 
expect the power of God to fall. It don't work right. that way. Right. Right. Amen. You gotta make up your mind. You gotta quit compromising. You can't have it both ways. You're gonna serve God or man. James 1 8 said, A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. You gotta side up. Some of you young people, you might figure out whose side you're on. And when you do finally figure out what side you're on, you can make a difference in this community. Amen. You can go to school this week and make a difference down there. It might not seem like you're making much of a difference, but amen, just maybe carrying a Bible under your arm. You can make a difference. Amen. Well, Brother Daniel, they can't take the Bibles to school. Yes, they can. Amen. They can't pray in school. Well, the teachers may not be allowed to. I don't know. But I know this. You can still bow your head over your food and say, thank you, Lord, for this food you blessed me with. Somebody will notice. And it might spark a little bit of revival if some people would just side and figure out which side you on. I'm bothered by the new movement of these churches that, that come in and what they do, they want to have like an early service for the older folks and they call it their traditional service. And then they'll have another service a little later for their contemporary service. That bothers me. It may not bother you, but it bothers me. Because you can't have it both ways. That's right. And what happens when they do that, Brother Brian, they just divided the church right down the middle. Yeah. And the last thing we need in God's house is division. And that's exactly what they brought in. They brought it themselves. You can't have it both ways. You've got to figure out, am I going to be something modern? Or am I going to stay old-fashioned and stay with the old paths? I'm glad, I'll say this, I'm glad Brother Joey has chosen the old path. Yeah. I'm glad for that. You ought to thank God for that. Yeah. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let others go on and do what they have to do. We're just going to serve God and keep living for Him, worshiping Him, standing with Him. Time to side up. I want you to notice the indecision here at the end of verse 21. He gave them the ultimatum at the end of verse 21. And the people answered Him not a word. Not a word. At some point, you're going to have to speak up. Yes, you have to speak up. And I'm not talking about being arrogant and smart aleck and just being mean spirited, but at some point, somebody's going to have to stand up. And somebody's going to have to speak up. Amen. 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 I, have, I have a neighbor behind my house, and I might get in trouble. I'm close to home tonight. <laughs> some of y'all might be related to them. I don't know. Uh, don't get too bad at me, but uh, they 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 uh, brought some attention to themselves the last year or so. But anyway, uh, just last week, one of them pulled up behind my yard and he was dumping off a load of trash or something back there at about six thirty in the morning. I'm up getting ready to do some stuff. My wife's trying to sleep, and and he comes up. And he's got his radio just blasting as loud as it could go. And not only was my family trying to sleep. But what he was listening to was just plum pitiful. Right. Now, if he had been a little bit of George Jones, probably wouldn't have been too upset. <laughs> I told you this morning, I'm a little bit carnal. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> it wasn't George Jones, though, that he had crank. And I mean, it was pitiful. My kids are getting ready for school. The windows are open. They don't need to be hearing that message. They said, what would you do? I stuck my head out the door. I said, hey, buddy, turn that down. He's like, yes, sir. And he turned it off. You say, what would you do? I was speaking up. You say, what would he, what would you have done if he had said no? I don't know. <laughs> I was a pastor, but I'm not right now, so I guess I could be a striker. I don't know. I'm pretty little though. I gotta watch out though. I'm in, I'm in bad shape. Somebody's gonna have to speak up. Somebody's gonna have to side up. Somebody's gonna have to start saying the sin is sin, and if it was wrong, it's still wrong. Yeah. It's still right. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm glad there's a lot of positive things in this book. Yes, there's a lot. I could have come in tonight and we could preach on shouting and rejoicing and on heaven, and I like all of that. But it ain't all positive. Amen. Do you ever notice for a battery that work, it takes a positive and a negative? Right. I'm sorry, y'all. You're getting the negative tonight. All right. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to speak up. Preach on, brother. They were indecisive. Thought about that, you know what came to my mind? Squirrels crossing the road. <laughs> you ever watch a squirrel cross the road? If you live anywhere near Hoover Hill Road, you've seen it plenty of times. You ever watch them jokers, they get out 
the road and you're coming out of 60 miles an hour, or in my case, 80, and they're just looking at you and it's just, <laughs> which way do I go? Which way do I go? They're indecisive. Have you ever noticed there's a lot of dead squirrels? I mean, a whole lot of them. There's a lot of God's people today in the middle of the road. Yes, sir. You better make up your mind right now. I'm going with God. Make that decision now. Notice the individual in verse 22. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. The Baal's prophets are 450 men. Elijah said, I'll stand up. Amen. Even if nobody else stands with me. Heard an old preacher say this. He said, you won't walk for long if you can't walk alone. That's good. I do not like being alone. I like fellowship. I like camaraderie. I like the fact that me and your preacher, we can call, we can text each other, and man, I love you, brother. I'm praying for you. And I, I like that. I'm glad I got some preacher friends like that, and people that aren't even necessarily preachers. That we, You ought to thank God if you have that. But let me say this. There may come a day when it's just you and God. Amen. You need to make up your mind right now. I'm going with God even if I'm all by myself. If everybody else jumps ship, I'm going to hang in there and I'm going with God all the way. In this thing. I want you to read down through here with me several verses. Verse 23. Notice what plays out here. He said, Let them therefore give us two bullets. And let them choose one bullet for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullet and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And call ye on the name of your little G God. And I will call on the name of the big L Lord. And the big G God that answered by fire, let him be the big G God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullet for yourselves and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullet which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. Surprise, surprise. And they leaped upon the altar which was made, and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Let me just say, I like Elijah. Oh yeah, I like him pretty good. He mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or her adventure, he sleepeth. It must be awake. I'm glad I got a God tonight that I ain't got to wake up. Amen. I'm glad I don't have to grab him by the collar and say, Wake up, God, I need you. Amen. No, he's always aware of what's going on in my life and your life. Verse 28, and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. Now they've gone from calling on him, crying out to him, leaping and jumping up and down on the altar, and now they're putting cuts and marks all over their arms. Have you ever noticed that cutting is always associated with devil worship? What about that maniac of Gadara over there? Running around in the tombs crazy full of the devil cutting himself? reason I say that, that's a big thing right now. we got some teachers in here. You know I'm telling the truth. I bet some of you young people here tonight, you know somebody who goes in their room puts the headphones on, cranks up that devil music, and they go to cutting on themselves. I used to preach that ten years ago. Parents would look at me like, he's crazy, people don't do that. They were doing it in the Bible. Yeah. You better know they're doing it today. You're right. And it's associated with devil worship. So what's going on in America, Brother Daniel? People are full of the devil. Amen. That's what's going on. Amen. Verse Number 29. It came to pass when midday was passed and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto me. Elijah has seen enough of this foolishness yeah. going on. I mean, he's had enough of it. He's watched them making fools out of themselves. He's had all he can stand. And I would say if he was anything like an Arkansas person or a North Carolina person, he said, hey, him. Right. 
<laughs> Y'all say that around here? Yeah. Amen. Some of you parents, you probably said that a time or two. You got kids that act like mine sometimes. You said that. Hey, him. That's what my dad said. If I got in trouble, he'd say, hey, boy, him. And when he said, him, you didn't say, hold on, there's a commercial coming up. <laughs> Oh, you'd be in the hospital flapping your back. There wasn't no, hold on, hold on, Dad, I'm almost to the next level. Yeah, there'd be no next level, I promise you that. He said, you, know, you, you answered, you can, you know, the problem is parents ain't got no authority anymore. Seems like the kids are running the home. They ain't no authority. Amen. When I, when I was growing up, my parents had authority. You minded them, you obeyed them, you did what they told them, told you to do. It's not to say we was perfect, we just tried not to get caught. We knew we was going to be in a world of mess where we didn't get caught. I remember I grew up in a church about like this, probably not as long, but about as wide. We had two sections, and I'd sit about over here, second row. Mom and Dad sat over here, second row. I'd look at them. They weren't paying attention to me. They were plugged into the preacher. Amen. They were taking notes on the preacher, and I thought, well, I can cut up with my butt. Wrong. I just thought they weren't paying attention because we'd get to play around cutting up and all of a sudden, brother, I mean, I'd get jerked up by my shirt collar. I was rapture from there to there in the morning in the middle of the night. That's right. Like that. I mean, I knew about getting your ears thumped, your head thumped. I knew about, amen, I knew about belts and switches and paddles. Oh, yeah, and some of y'all are like, I mean, can I get a witness tonight? Man. I mean, we had all sorts of neat little weapons of mass destruction lying around my parents' house. <laughs> I thank God for it. I didn't like it then, yeah. but it's what I need. Right, right. It's, what, it's what a lot of young kids need today. Yes, man. Amen. We might just all line them up across the front, just give them a good whooping in the house. I'll bring a Bible right there. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I, I, every, every kid in here, I just became their. Worst preacher, like, get yeah, him out of here. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Time out when you're out of the car. I don't think that's what it's saying. <laughs> hey, have you, ever, have you ever been at the store? Surely I'm not the only one. You ever been at the store and all of a sudden you hear somebody in the aisle over and they're whining, I don't want that kind of cereal. Yeah, I, want, I want the sugary kind. I want the fruity pet. That's just me and all the other husbands trying to get our sugar fix on. <laughs> now, have you ever heard some of them kids, though, just going crazy? And you hear some silly mom over there. Don't you make me count to 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, doesn't that, that just strike you in your heart? Three. <laughs> One. <laughs> Say, well, 
well, preacher, if I go down the altar, people will think I'm a bad person. We all know you're a bad person. <laughs> Next thing you can do is hit the altar. Yeah. Yes, you know, this altar is for more than just getting saved. Right. It's a good place to get saved. Yeah. Man, it's a place where we ought to regularly do business with God. Yes. I mean, this, place, this is a place of help. Yeah. It's a place where we get strength and encouragement and forgiveness. There'll be no revival until we fix what's broken. Amen. That altar's a place where we can die to sell and we're, where we yield to the will of God. Amen. The fact that the altar was just in a state of disrepair was a real testimony of how far the people had gone from God. Amen. And when the altars are no longer used in the church, Shows how far people are away from God. Yeah, sure. And look, I know there's times sometimes you preach and, and nobody comes to the altar. That's just how it is sometimes. But when it's week after week after week, there's either a problem right here or right there or both. Amen. They fix what was broken. The law of entropy says that y'all didn't know I knew big words like that, did you? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I know a few, not many, but the law of entropy. Now some of y'all that work with my kids down there at Tabernacle, now, now you know why they're such a mess. They come from me. The law of entropy says this. It says the things left to themselves tend to break down. That's true. Things left to themselves break down. You plant a garden like a lot of people are doing right now, if you don't tend to that thing, it's going to get overrun with weeds. You can buy a brand new 2014 model car and drive it off the showroom floor and the minute it leaves that showroom, it starts falling apart. Yep. You have to maintain things. It's the same way with your relationship with God. It's the same way with this altar. It has to be maintained. The altar speaks of restoration. Notice verse 31. It said, And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. He took those twelve stones as a reminder of who they were, who they were prophetically supposed to be. He said, hey, you're the children of Israel. You're not supposed to be running with this crowd. You're not supposed to be following after Baal. Now I realize tonight we're not... And then we're not Jews, we're not Old Testament Jews, we're Gentiles, but we are the children of God. Yes. I just want to remind you tonight, we're not to be following after the world and the God. flesh and the God. devil. We're God's people. We're to be a peculiar people, a yes. separated, yes. sold out, amen, committed to God amen. people. Amen. Amen. They fixed what was broken, but then notice this in verse 32. They filled up the barrel. It said, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran around about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. They filled up the barrels. You say, Brother Daniel, how did that bring about revival? What does filling up barrels with water? What does pouring all this water on the sacrifice have to do with meeting with God or having revival? It's all about the purpose of why He did it. He wanted to make sure that they knew it was God. He wanted to make sure that they knew it was not Him or anybody that was helping Him. He wanted them to know it's all God for Him. Amen. This thing is all God. I'm glad He uses us. I'm glad He allows us to have a part. But you better know all the glory and all the praise needs to go to God Almighty. We couldn't do a thing without Him. Amen. We need to make sure He gets all the glory that filled up the barrels. In other words, they got self out of the way. They said it's God. A lot of pride in the church. A lot of pride in the ministry. As preachers, it's real easy to get lifted up with pride. Mm -hmm. People come by and they pat you on the back, shake your hand, tell you a good job. Now, I appreciate all that. But I had Brother, Brother Brian here this morning Sunday school. He said something about me singing, just really bragging on me. And I kept having to go, stay down, head, stay down. Don't get swelled up. That's why God will give you a good wife. She'll help you. She sees it get too big, she'll poke it with a needle. That's right. 
hey, y'all, we just know Mama Clay. As Miss Robin wrote in that good song, we just a speck in dirt. We're nothing. We're nothing but an old bunch of old dirty dogs deserving of nothing but hell. Hey, here we are saved by yeah, the good grace of God, yes. washed in the blood on our yes. way to heaven. Amen. He needs to get all the glory. I get put out sometimes. You go to some meetings, different preachers' meetings, and different things like that. And somebody will get up and say, It's so wonderful to have a doctor so and so with us. <laughs> doctor so and so is the, the pastor of one of the largest and fastest growing churches in America, founder of one of the greatest Bible colleges that America has ever known. He's so wonderful. Everything about him is wonderful. Even his feet smell wonderful and his breath smells wonderful in the morning. I think that makes God pee. Some of y'all are looking at me like you ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you're right. And we need to make sure God gets all the glory. Yes, he filled up the barrel. They poured the water out. And they said, we're going to make sure they know it was God. Yeah. Now, I want you to notice this in verse 36. They focused on the beyond. It said there, it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Then Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let me know this day that Thou art God in Israel, and that I am Thy servant, and I have done all these things at Thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that Thou art the Lord God, and Thou hast turned their heart back again. And here's what I want you to take note of. Elijah prayed there that he wanted to thank God that he had turned their heart back. But they don't really turn their heart back until verse 39 after the fire falls. You say, what was he doing? He was focusing beyond the present circumstances. Yeah. He was focusing beyond the present critics and those that were mocking him and making fun of him and making fun of his God. You say, what was he doing? He was praying a prayer of faith. Yeah. Right. They hadn't repented yet. But he said, God, I want to thank you that you've turned their hearts back. That's good, brother. You know, it might bring some revival into our homes and, and into our churches if, when we start praying some prayers of faith. That's good. I don't think there would be anything wrong with just going ahead and saying, God, I want to thank you that you're going to save my young man. I want to thank you for that prodigal that you are going to bring back home. I want to thank you, God, for the revival that you're about to pour out upon Bethel Baptist Church. Amen. I just want to go ahead and thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I'm believing by faith that you're going to do it. Thank God would be too upset to pray that Amen. They focused on the beyond. By the way, you're going to have to look beyond some present circumstances. Right now, where you're sitting, things may look a little bleak in your life. Circumstances may seem a little scary. By faith, we need to look beyond all that and realize we've got a big God that's about to do big things. Yes, sir. I believe that. Yes. I really do. I hope you believe that. And then here's the part of the story we're all familiar with and we all really like. Verse 38, the fire burned up everything. It said, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust. I like the way the King James Bible tells it right here. And licked up the water that was in the trench. And you want to talk about showing up fire? When the fire falls and it licks up the water in the trench, it's been burnt. I mean, when it's burning up the dust and it's burning up the stones and it's licking up the water, it's been burned up. The fire of the Lord fell and it burned up everything. And here's where we're at. Modern day Christianity right here in America. We want the fire to fall. But we don't want all the other stuff. We don't want to fix what's broken. We don't want to fill up the barrels and make sure God gets all the glory. That's good. Yeah. We, we don't want to have faith and focus on the beyond. We just want it easy. We want it cheap. We want it simple. We want it fast. We want little microwave revivals. Oh, that's good, bro. And it don't come that way. No. Revival will cost you something. Revival will move you out of your comfort zone. Amen. And then them. Revival might bring a little soul searching. Might even show you some things in your life that aren't too good. 
And when it does, you're going to be put in a position where you're going to have to deal with it. But I promise you this, when revival comes, it's worth it. Amen. It's worth it. You might have to stay at church a little longer than an hour. But it's yeah. worth it. Amen. Might even get a little bit more of that out of it. But it's worth it. Amen, Might drive you to your knees a little bit more and a little bit longer. Amen. But it's worth it. Yes. Right. Might, might take sacrificing some of your pleasures. Yeah, but it's worth it. Amen. Hear all these guys on TV. We want the fire of God to fall. Oh, hallelujah. But don't call sin sin. Don't tell us how sorry we are. Right. We'll never buy This fire burned up everything. I'd say this tonight in closing. Miss Sue, if you would go ahead and get us a song ready for invitation. I'd say this. For the fire to burn up something, it's going to have to have something to burn. Right. Amen. You're going to have to right. sacrifice something to God. And it might not even be tonight that you're, you're just full of sin. I ain't here trying to make the accusation anybody here is just full of sin. You may be some of the most sanctified, separated folks in Randolph County. I don't know. What about the sacrifice of praise? Oh, we can get real religious and sanctimonious, but then sit there like a wooden Indian and never offer up God any glory. Hey, He wants a sacrifice to burn up. Yes, sir. But again, if you're going to bring a sacrifice, you're going to have to fix the altar. Amen. The That's good, brother. I don't know about you. I want to see revival. I'd like to see it right here. Amen. We don't go to our church. No, but here's the thing. If it'll happen here, it'll happen here. Amen. And I don't care if it's here or the church across the road or the church across town. I just want to see revival. Amen. Amen. I'd like my kids to see revival. Amen. We don't hear a lot about it. We have a lot of revival meetings. Yeah. We don't have a lot of revival. Right, right, right. Wouldn't it be a blessing? Some people would get serious with God mm -hmm. and really want and desire God to see God move in a great way. And maybe some of them prayers you've been praying for so long, maybe they would get answered. Yeah. We'll get serious with God. We play games. A lot of people play games nowadays. Right. You notice that? Yeah. To a lot of people, church is just a game. Mm -hmm. It's just something we do to feel good about ourselves. We go on Sunday and we pat ourselves on the back and say, there, I went to church. You're right, preacher. This thing's a whole lot bigger than that. Amen. Yeah. I wonder not do you want revival. We just stand to Heavenly Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for the testimony of the community for their preaching. Pray you bless him and his family real good. Bless these folks. Thank you for them listening and amen and me for what sure helps. I pray that you would send revival to Bethel Baptist Church. I pray you'd send revival to this community. And I believe you can still do that. I have faith that you can do that. If we want it. I pray we would want it and have a desire for it, hunger for it. Bless this invitation. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.